We are back out at the ranch house and we are going to be doing some um, changing and upgrades at the same time. Um, so over here, um, I have my power room. And if we come to the side over here, we can see I have some solar panels. Now on the back side of this um, power room, I have um, a racking system that I used to have um, solar panels on. I repurposed those panels for another property and I went ahead and picked up um, some new panels here. Um, these panels here are quite large. Um, these are 550 watt um, bifacial solar panels and I have eight of them here. And so we're gonna be um, reinstalling these on that racking system over there. I'm gonna be doing what I, I do on all of them that works pretty good is use Unistrut. All right guys, so here is the mounting rack. Uh, as you guys can see, I just set one of the Unistruts up there just to kind of show you guys how it's all gonna line up. Uh, we have some fencing around here we opened up because we have cattle, so we don't want the cattle to mess with the uh, solar panels, obviously. Um, but as we start putting things on, I'll show you guys how we uh, mount all these panels. For those of you that don't know, um, how we're gonna actually attach the Unistrut to the um, galvanized round steel pole that you guys see here is actually utilizing um, super strut or unistrut um, two inch pipe clamps. Um, I've done this on all my solar panel arrays and it works awesome. Basically they're made, see that little channel right in here? It's actually made to clip into the actual unistrut. And then um, there's like two, there's two of these brackets and I'll show you guys how we put those on. It's super easy, super simple. Anyone can do this. Um, but yeah, you just gotta have the right hardware and um, go from there. Um, so the clamps are very simple to go on to the Unistrut here. So what I do is I try to I get them attached. What it is is you go into the rail and you twist it sideways because it's got the grooves to lock into the Unistrut itself uh, for both sides and then you just have a nut and bolt that goes through here. So what I do is I usually leave it, um, you know, loose a little bit so that way if I need to adjust my, you know, my framing when I put all the panels together, I have some play. And then what I'll do is I'll just come back and make sure everything's all lined up where I want it and then tighten them up. out of breath here but uh, we have all the unistrut installed we have the eight um, solar panels installed currently working on wiring it I had some old wiring from the old panels which were wired a little bit different um, in this case um, because I'm utilizing the grow watt um, 12k um, off-grid inverter uh, the maximum input that I can put into there is 145 watts technically so we want to stay a little bit below that right and each one of these panels is technically um, 49.7 um, volts, open circuit voltage. Um, so I'm going to be wiring um, four of the panels in series, the other four panels in series. And then we're going to go ahead and parallel those two strings together um, to come in so that way I don't go over my voltage and then that way I can connect all these panels here. Um, the wind's picking up in the background. I don't know if you guys can hear it. And the sun is starting to go down over here. I'm just trying to get as much as I can done today. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the wiring tomorrow. Uh, and then I have to make sure that I wire those panels back in correctly. I'm trying to match the voltage as much as possible. Um, so I'm gonna go and just double check the voltage readings on those. And if they're too far off, um, then I'll just go ahead and pick up a few more panels um, to put over here. As you guys can see, I can easily fit another two on this rack. Um, it's all about trying to make sure that you don't go over the ratings of your inverter because uh, then you can cause trouble and problems with yourself, you know, on your equipment. Um, so try to stay below the, um, the threshold of some of these things. So sometimes you just got to get a little tricky on how you're going to wire them in series or parallel or whatever you're going to do. Um, but yeah, um, at least they're mounted. So I'm pretty happy about that. So we have all of the um, solar panels installed. Uh, so we have eight 550 watt solar panels over here. And then we had five panels over here. I now have four. I removed the fifth panel for a reason. 
um, because the way I wired this is um, every four panels is wired in series, right? So I have four in series, four in series, then I have these paralleling down, and then I have um, these here wired in series running on its own string going into the um, uh, girl watt uh, off-grid inverter. Um, the reason I couldn't put that fifth panel in a string was because it would increase my voltage too high. Um, so um, that's okay. Um, we have more than enough power and we're good. It's all up and running. Um, it's coming into a uh, breaker panel right here. And then I also added a vent fan up here with a little solar panel in the corner right there. And this thing works pretty awesome. Um, it helps to keep the um, power room nice and cool. And um, here's the um, actual equipment, the grow watt, and then we have all the batteries here. And um, I already heated hot water. Uh, I have a regular hot water um, heating tank, electric. Um, so we already have hot water. And it's like 10, I think 10 o'clock in the morning, somewhere around there. I'm going to show you guys a screenshot of the actual power coming in right now. All right, so um, this is the app for the Grow Watt off-grid inverter that I use. And so let's just do a refresh really quick. Okay, so right here you guys see where it has the blue bubble, where the arrows and everything, where the solar panel is. Um, right there it says 4,947 watts coming in. So that's from all the solar panels that we installed um, and plus the four existing. You guys can see to the left right there, my battery percentage is at 88%. And the charging power going to the batteries is 4,691 watts. And then my house is consuming 379 watts right now. So you guys can see all that. And then let's go down, let's go to um, state of charge. So you guys can see, um, we basically only use about maybe 10, 20% of the battery capacity overnight. In this case, we only used about 10%. So there's, you know, quite a bit of percentage left over, 90% of the battery that we didn't even touch. And that's kind of typical for my off-grid home. On average, I would say we use about 20% of the top of the battery um, overnight. And that's, you know, running a washer and dryer, um, you know, lights, TVs, charging cell phones, you know, just regular stuff that regular people would do. Um, no different, really. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So you guys can see we were dropping down and then at like 6.40, uh, a little bit after 6.40 a.m., um, right around probably 7, maybe a little bit after 7 o'clock, we started charging. And then we went up to about 90%. Right, yeah, we probably, yeah, we went right back up to around 90%. And then I turned on the hot water heater so we could all have hot water. Um, and it brought it back down a little bit. And then now we're actually charging back up again. Um, but you guys can see the total amount of battery capacity in green is still quite a bit, right? So for us, a 30 or 35 kilowatt um, battery bank is plenty for what we for our needs. Um, but your your needs may be different, right? Maybe you're running ACs. We live where I live with my off grid home. We don't need AC. It's naturally nice and cool and breezy all the time. In fact, it's most of the time it's windy. In fact, I'm hiding behind the building my power room right now to talk to you guys and make this some um, screenshot for you guys because it's quite windy um but you know everybody's needs will be different so you know maybe a 30 kilowatt bank will work for you or maybe a 60 kilowatt um bank will work for you so it just depends but so i want to show you guys that it is online and it is working let's refresh again oh right there so now we're bringing in 5103 watts guys and then um, our battery is going up in percentage. We're now at 89%. And then we have 4,983 watts going into the batteries and consuming 252 watts in the house right now. So yeah, pretty awesome. And the time right now, you guys can see at the upper left-hand corner is 1019 AM. Now, I do want to mention something about these bifacial solar panels. Now, this is the first time of me actually owning any bifacial solar panel. So what does that mean, right? We can get power from the top and we can also get power from the bottom, right? And I've never had bifacial solar panels before. So this is my first time having them. And these are some high wattage panels, you know, 550 watts a piece. I have noticed a, comp a night and day difference between bifacial solar panels and regular solar panels. I did not believe or I didn't think that it was going to be that much of a benefit 
but it really is, at least in my situation, and I'll tell you guys why. So right now, it's getting power from the top, and it's also getting some radiant power from the bottom, right? So we're getting quite a bit of power. That's awesome. But what's really interesting is in the evening, so the sun is right here, right? So it starts to travel across the sky, and it actually sets way over there, okay? But my panels are facing over here. And the reason I have it facing over here is for winter time because when winter time the sun sets over here more so I'm, you know I'm always trying to capture as much uh, sunlight as I can but when it's not winter um, the sun actually sets way over there in a completely different location but because my panels are off the ground here on a ground mount system at, a, at this angle when the sun is even way over here already I'm still getting tons of power tons of power coming in and then even when it's still setting, I'm getting power. Why? Because it's hitting, it's it's radiating and, and the light is hitting the underneath of these, the bottom side of these solar panels. And so I notice I can get even 500 watts or 600 watts of power even right before the sun is setting. So that's pretty awesome that I'm able to capture as much, you know, power throughout the day because I can catch from both sides. With the other panels, right around, oh uh, man, maybe four four o'clock um I'm, I'm already down to like maybe only you know like 50 watts coming in or something very very little um if not any because the sun is already at a different angle and we're not able to capture anything because now they're pretty much just in the shade and you know um the sun is setting on us slowly so i'm able to capture a couple more hours at least of radiant energy from underneath the bottom of the panel throughout the day so that's really nice i've been i've seen a huge difference so i'm not telling you guys to go buy bifacial solar panels or anything but what i am saying is i personally have seen a difference with them um and i love it because i'm actually getting way more power out of the system i'm able to um, make sure the batteries are always charged um, a lot faster and a lot longer and then basically the way the grow watt inverter works is um, throughout the day once the batteries are fully charged, um, it has a pass-through function. So basically, whatever power we decide to use in the house or whatever um, is basically being converted live, straight from the solar panel directly into usable power in the home. It's not even touching the battery bank at all, right? It only touches the battery bank if we exceed or we're pulling more power than the solar panels are, are producing. Then it'll pull some of the power from the batteries. But in my case throughout the day once the batteries are charged uh, it's passed through power for me so the batteries are just basically sitting idle sitting fully charged um and you know from there so yeah it's an awesome system works great but i want to point something out to all of you guys you know in my videos obviously i have a grow out right and i purchased this no one gave me this grow out right here i bought this okay and i bought these batteries right here nobody gave me these batteries but you don't have to use this brand of equipment there's another brand of all-in-one inverter, which is really nice that I, I want to buy, um, but it's quite expensive. And that's why I decided to go with the grow out because it's a, the price point was more in my range for what I was doing here. And that other inverter is a all-in-one, which is a Solark. But there's also other brands out there, not just Grow Watt, not just Solark. There's other brands out there that offer something very similar to what we're doing here. So don't, th don't, don't watch the video and say, oh, I, you know, I have to buy this Grow Watt. Or I have to buy these batteries. You don't. You can buy whatever you want. You right. You buy whatever you think is going to work for you. All I'm doing is sharing my experience with you guys with the equipment that I purchase and I have. There's other options out there. There's different types of batteries out there. Different brands of batteries that do very similar things um, at a better price point than these batteries. And there's a better price point on some of these all-in-one um, inverters as well. But then you can go to a higher end, um, which is also Solark. So maybe in a future project or a future build out on another property, um, I may end up going with a Solark on the next one. Um, but we'll see. I, I've actually had some pretty good success with this grow watt and it's been installed now for, for some time and it just works. And, and I like that. So anyway, guys, just a really quick video here. Um, good luck on your guys' projects and everything. Um, if your guys' power room is getting a little warm, put a solar fan in, drill a hole through your wall, put a fan in. And because I've noticed a big difference between me putting a fan in my solar room. I do have vents in the floor of my power room. I do. Um, but because there's no pass through uh, up until recently, it was staying on the warmer side. But now that I have the vent, you know, actually pushing um, air out, 
Um, we're pu you're pulling in from the floor and then we're pulling out from the ceiling. Um, it's been keeping the power room nice and comfortable, not hot, and just nice and comfortable. So um, very simple setup here as, as far as that's concerned. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for t tuning in. Thanks for leaving comments and subscribing and everything. And, um, you know, anybody, anyone can do this stuff, guys. Just sit down and plan your, your, your build out, figure out what equipment you want to use, what budget you're on, and find what will work for you. Right? You don't have to buy bifacial solar panels. You can buy regular solar panels. The regular solar panels are cheaper um, in most times than these bifacial solar panels. Um, so, you know, each his own. You know, don't feel obligated by watching my channel or other off-grid channels or whatever it is about their equipment. Buy whatever you want, right? Whatever's going to work for you. But watching other people like me and other people that have different types of equipment, you can see what types of, if it's working good. If it's not working good, is there, is there issues? You know, that kind of stuff. So it kind of helps you be a little bit more savvy on the equipment that you're purchasing for your project. So, yeah.